So um, in, in one chip, we create several junctions in which we deposit uh, um, lines with different width. This, this here is the, is the width in nanometers for each one of the lines. In the middle, we have, um, in here, we have test samples, which are bridges which have, which have no um, magnetic history. Uh, I will show you the data obtained between this line over here and this one over here. So you can see clearly that the bridge that has the iron has a larger resistance as well as a lower TC compared to the other bridge that have no iron. And if we um, take an IP characteristics that are low enough temperature, uh, we'll see that the, um, the, the bridge with iron has a reduced uh, current compared to the other one and also a larger resistance, about four times larger. So uh, if we naively uh, calculate the um, ICR product for this system, um, it, it does not be close to the, or, or, or the order of magnitude of the um, gap voltage. So this is very remarkable, but uh, um, and this is a flow, flux flow type um, junction, so this, the value of iron is not completely clear. Um, then we um, characterize a function of temperature, or, or take the like this function of temperature, and, and we see that all of them are flux flow type uh, for all the temperatures below TC. And uh, if, we got, if we estimate the total current, the product of the temperature, we see um, a clear transition from a region of small junction to a large junction. Um, if we take the diffraction pattern, even though at, at this temperature, 18 kelvins, we are apparently in the, in the small junction regime, uh, we'll see that, that we have self field effects, and this might be coming from the uh, magnetic field of the iron strip that we have. Finally, some of the systems are very peculiar. We, we apply um, um, a microwave, and we see all kinds of uh, steps. We have superior steps, we have half into steps, and we also have uh, uh, photon induced steps over here. So um, the combination of seeing these um, um, dynamic resistance and also the possibility of having high CRM um, values uh, not only make the system um, suitable for um, a SMU system, but perhaps also as a some kind of a detector in the terahertz. Um, so to summarize this work, um, we have been creating uh, these type of microgrids, and uh, they show promising um, just some characteristics with very few large ICR values. Uh, this method, this location method, the, the novelty or the the, um, um, the nice thing about it is that it's very simple, and uh, and it might be or is suitable for case of just junctions for the, into large circuits. Um, this type of junction might um, um, address all the requirements for the for SFQ. And um, although we do not know yet what is the mechanism that produces precisely, we have point out what is precisely the mechanism that produces the junction, we believe that it's suitable uh, um, for low DC and high DC materials. And right now we are uh, developing the split um, as well as different type of containers to um, you know, verify this ICR protocols. Thank you. <coughs> open for discussion. In defining your RCFM, what do you take as a criteria? I'm sorry? What do you take as a criteria in defining your RCFM? The RCFM is, right now we just um, <coughs> find the value of, uh, we just speak the resistance over here and large current. Um, another thing that we're doing is to, um, to apply also large magnetic field. In this case, it's not too large, but 300 gauss, but uh, um, we try to kill the superconductivity completely in that fashion. So um, at this point, or what I'm presenting here is just the fitting at, at this level, the fitting of the IP curve at this level. 